We have our 66 Lincoln convertible here. That's our own personal car. This is a car that we hope to have in SEMA. Uh, this is a car that we, that we want to uh, showcase uh, our abilities here at Burles at Night at Customs. Wanted to give you an update on this vehicle. So what we're doing now is we've got the fuel injection mounted. Uh, we've been working underneath the hood, getting everything nice, tucked in and tight. Uh, we've decided to go ahead and use the original big block engine. I just think that adds a lot of nostalgia to the car, so we want to keep that motor in there. It's got plenty of torque and horsepower, so we're going to go that route. I love the nostalgia of the dash on the car. I don't really want to mess with that. The, the radio in it's got the old 8-track in it. When I bought the car, it had a Rolling Stones 8-track in it. We're going to keep that in there. It had a Waylon Jennings 8-track in the glove box. We want to keep that in there. I love the door handles on the car, the, the suicide doors, just that look is just really awesome. First thing you got to start with on that car is the stance. We want to we want to get the car setting right, whether that be if it's just sitting in a parking lot at a certain level or if we're driving the car. We want the stance to, to really speak, say a lot about the car. If you look at the car and you look at the bottom of the quarter panel and the rocker panel, everything's coming down here and then you've got the bumper that's level with it. So what we're thinking about doing is adding a panel here. That way all the sheet metal has the line going through here. And we're gonna cut the bumper here, and then obviously we're gonna tuck the bumper in. We're gonna get rid of these moldings, we're gonna get rid of these moldings, and a few other little custom things that we're gonna do. But for the 62, 63 Lincolns, their fenders were already lower. They just changed the design here. We like the idea of having the fender and the body lines all up in So in regards to the paint, um, man, I've changed my mind about three different times for the co color of this car. So uh, as a painter, uh, you know, you really want it to stand out. But honestly, with this car, I want the car to stand out itself. We're going to go with a, um, a, a basic gray color. It's not going to have any pearl or any metallic in it. But what that color will allow us to do is be able to show off the body lines. We wanted to, this is kind of our calling card since we are a, a new upstart custom shop. So we wanted something that uh, folks could look at and look down the side of this car to show off uh, our ability as far as body repair and getting the line straight. So it's just gonna be a basic color that will be really deep, have a lot of luster to it, have a, have a really deep shine, but we don't want the color to take away from everything else that we're doing with the car. The car now is in its final primer stage. All we've got left to do is do a final block of the car and it's gonna be ready to go to the paint booth. But before we send it to paint, we wanted to go ahead and get all the suspension back underneath the car. We've got the motor and the transmission that we've taken out. We're gonna go ahead and put the motor and transmission, all the suspension underneath the car. We want to get the car running before we take it into the paint booth. That way we're not leaning over the car as much because we've also added a fuel injection system here. We wanted to add something a little bit different. There's a lot of these cars out there, but we wanted to uh, put reverse lights and in, incorporate them into the bumper. But we also want it to match the style lines and go along with the original theme of the car. So I'll let Kobe tell you a little bit about what we've decided to do here, which is a little bit different than what we did in the front. Uh, we're going to flush mount the, re the reverse lights into the bumper. We're going to keep the same shape as the reflector, but this is going to be uh, ghosted into the paint. So when, when we flush mount them, uh, we'll, we'll dust paint over that light. So you're not going to see the light necessarily during the day. It'll, it'll be hidden, but when you put the car in reverse, that light will shine through the paint. Uh, again, on the, on the rear bumper, we've, we've moved the bumper up. We sucked it in tighter to the car. Uh, these pieces used to bolt on. We did away with that. We uh, welded that all in. Uh, there was a, a bumperette here that we completely got rid of to make the bumper more streamlined across the middle. Um, we're gonna run the exhaust. This was the old reverse lights, uh, the factory location. So we made a bezel here and are, are running the exhaust out the bumper there. Um, we're having one-off uh, tail light bezels machined for the car uh, that's going to open the lens up and you'll see more of the lens than what the factory bezel allowed. So a lot, lot of work went into the rear bumper on this car, um, but it's, it's going to pay off in the, in the end. It's a lot more streamlined look.
the, the biggest challenge on the car is once you once you start working on the car and you start disassembling the car and you have all these thoughts and uh, these aspirations of what we're going to do to the car. And then once you get into it, and it, the hard part is just really going over all the little small things, making sure that all the body lines are right, the gaps are perfect, there's no imperfections in the metal, there's no little chips or dings, getting the bumpers pre-fit to make sure that once we do get it painted, that everything's gonna go right together like, like a puzzle. Uh, what you don't wanna do is, is start getting all these hours and time and miss some steps get this thing painted and then realize that we're going to have fitment issues or things of that nature. So it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort and really patience to get it to the stage we're at now. We're going to transport it to our other facility where we have uh, three paint booths. We're going to utilize two of those paint booths, one with the car in it, the other one with some of the sheet metal parts in it so we can paint it at the same time. So we're going to put it on the rollback, take it over. We're going to take the parts individually, wrap them up so they don't get damaged. And when we get to the other shop, we'll start setting them up inside the paint booth. Then the, the prep process will begin. We'll start taping the vehicle up and then we'll prep it a couple of times, get it tacked up, cleaned up and ready, ready for paint. What we've done now that we've got the car over here, we've, we've blowed the car off again to blow, get all the dust out of it. We're going over the car with a glass cleaner and we're finding all of our edges and, and areas that have not been sanded yet or they're a little bit dry. We're getting all that stuff sanded smooth. Then we'll come back over it and then we'll prep it two or three times and just go around all the edges, all the all the wheel well lips to make sure all these edges are nice and clean because this is it. If this, is, this is our last opportunity to get it right before we put paint on it. So once we put paint on it, we don't want to have to come back and find out there's areas that we missed. what makes the difference, especially for the longevity of the build for a car or a truck, whatever you're building, it's going to hold up and stand the test of time. If you don't do this things that we're doing to this car right, it'll, it'll, never, it'll never last. The color we're using here is Leadfoot Gray. I want to give you a big thank you to Glazerit, BASF, English Color, our jobber for, for providing the paint and the clear coat and the primer for this project. This is our 923 460 clear. It's a really good medium solids clear. It's not a really thick clear, so one thing we're concerned with because we're putting eight coats on here, we don't want to get it too thick. We don't want to have soft pop issues or cracking issues. So we got this medium solid clear. It's a really good product. It's a big car, number one. There's a lot of angles on this car, uh, especially when you when you walk over to the car itself and you look at the quarter panel at the top. There's uh, 45 degree angles. There's certain angles, and I was just saying that's a that's a good candidate for getting some runs right there. So we're going to be really careful putting eight coats of clear on it, not to get uh, any runs or sags in the clear. So, and then when you actually start pulling the trigger around this car, you really appreciate how big it is. It's a, it's a whale. <laughs> we want our car to stand out, whether it be the stance of the car, whether it be the body lines in the car, whether it's just the paint, the depth of the paint. I'm a painter, that's what I've done my whole life. My calling card is our paintwork. It still looks like a 66 Lincoln, not some type of futuristic vehicle or something like that. So we wanna really keep the, the nostalgic that's associated with the car, but just make it look 100 times better than it looked rolling off the showroom in 1966.